Hi everyone, this is Lance Moore, your Tampa Bay Realtor, and in this video, I'm going to go over four essential home buying tips that's going to save you a ton of time and a ton of frustration. And make sure you stay all the way to the end of this video because I'm going to deliver on some really, really good information that's going to blow your mind. Okay, so I know that's a pretty bold statement, what I said up front. I'm going to deliver some information that's going to blow your mind. But I'll tell you what, I've been doing this for over 20 years, and anybody who knows me back in Dallas when I lived there or here in my office knows I'm about efficiency. What I'm into is I'm into knowledge. I'm into game plans. I'm into a system. I love doing these videos, and this is probably my favorite because I love saving people time, money, and frustration, and that's what I'm going to do in this video. And I say money because when we're adults, time is money. And I've been doing this for so long. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk you through four home buying tips that I do with my buyers and you know it, it's going to save you so much time. It's the exact system that I give all my buyers. It's the exact, exact system that when my wife and I moved here from Dallas in 2006, we found a home that we live in. We've been living in it for um, since 2006. We found it from start to finish in five and a half hours. I've worked with buyers that have worked with other real estate agents that literally worked with them for months, and I'm talking four months, 12 months, 18 months, and then I go out and show them one time they're in a house. So let's get to it. Let's start off. The first three tips are very similar, but let's start off with the first one. When I sit down with a buyer, I'll ask them, tell me a little bit about what you're looking for. They'll tell me about what they're looking for, their situation. We'll talk for a little bit. And there's four things I really want to hone in on. And the first one is I want to hone in on how old do they want the home to be? So we're, we're in 2018 right now. So let's say they want a home and they tell me, well, we only want to go back five years. What I'll ask them and I'll say, well, let me ask you a question. If it's the perfect home, in the perfect area for the perfect price and it's six years old would you buy the home and they say well yes and I'll say okay well how old will you go back well we'll go back 10 years I'll say okay well if it's a perfect home in the perfect place the perfect price it's 11 years old would you buy it no okay so we know they're at we know they're at 10 years the buyer all right so then I'll ask them I'll say well what about the square footage What's the smallest square footage you would be willing to buy um, live in? And they'll say, well, 2,500. And I'll say, well, let's say it was the perfect home in the perfect area at the perfect price and it's 2,497 square feet. Would you buy the home? And they say, well, yes. And I'll say, okay, what's the minimum you would go down to? And then I keep on doing this. And the reason is because when you're looking in the MLS, when you're working with a real estate agent, what you want to do is you want to go down to the very low. You, you don't want to just put something 2,500 square feet. Um, so you want to go down to your lowest possible square footage you would be at. And I'll wrap this up in a little bit. But so then what I do is I'll go to the price. I'll say, tell me about the price. What price range you, do you want to be in? Well, we probably want to be in around the 350 price range top. So let's do 275 to 350. And I'll say, okay, let's say you found the perfect home. Now, people sort of know what's going on by now. They know what I'm going to say. And, they, and I say, well, you found the perfect home. It's in the perfect area. You absolutely love the home, and it's 351. Would you buy the home? And they say, yes. They say, what's your top price range you want to be at? And they say, 360. And then I, I say, look, here's the thing. I'm not trying to talk you into buying an older home. I'm not trying to talk you into buying a more expensive home. I'm not trying to talk you into buying a smaller home that you want. But the problem is when people come in to me as a real estate agent, and I know they do this to all the other agents, and most agents just don't ask these questions. So what tends to happen is they go out there, they give them the parameter, and it's like looking you know, through, through a hole this big. But what you need to do is you need to expand and then contract. It's a process of elimination. And the reason why you want to do this is because when I was 
first in the business. I was brand new in the business. I remember someone and I did not do this to. And what happened is we went out the next day and we, we um, what happened is they expanded their criteria. So they said that we wanted to be in this criteria, they expanded it out to here. And we lost the home by one day. And I told myself, this is never going to happen again. So I sat there and I thought for a long, long time, what do I need to do to make sure this never happens again? And that's the problem. I, I've talked to people that have literally lost four or five homes before because they keep on going back. And what tends to happen, if you don't do this, a lot of cases, you end up like a gerbil on a treadmill. You're going over and over. Because as soon as you look at all the homes, up to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars at twenty five hundred square feet that's five years old what's going to happen if you don't see anything you're the you either wait till that perfect home comes up or you're going to have to move and it's usually in one of those three areas it's going to be in the price the square footage or the year built so what i tell everybody i don't really care if you buy a three hundred thousand dollar home at two thousand square feet that's three years old you know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to expand and then contract because what I want to do is I want to make sure you know the homes available. Because it's like this, if you say 350000 unbelievably, there are people that will actually list their home at three fifty two, at three fifty five, And the problem is you won't see them. And you know this because when you go on these websites like Zillow, Trulli, and all these other ones, they're always in increments. Buyers are increment shoppers. So the problem is you need to expand your criteria. You need to open up. Look, at the end of the day, if someone wants to be in a, in a $350,000 home, they could find one for two hundred and fifty. dollars It's fine with me. Or if they want 2,500 square feet, you know, maybe they find a home that's perfect at 2,400, but I want to give them the options. Maybe they find a home at 2,800 or 3,200, but I want to give people the options. And then as a real estate agent, what I want them to do is I want them to send the homes to me, the MLS numbers. I want to look through them and I want to see. I want to see what type of area they're in because I want to feel it out. Is, is this a really good area? Is it not such a good area? Is the home overpriced, underpriced? Who's the builder on the home? Is it a quality builder? Is it a quantity builder? Because the last thing you want to do as a home buyer is go out and pay the price of a Lexus and you're only getting a Honda. No offense to Honda owners, I'm just saying. You know, the goal is to pay the price of a Hyundai and get a Honda. And that's what you want to do. So you want to make sure you hire a real estate agent that really knows what they're doing. If you haven't seen my video on how to choose a realtor, just go right up here. You can check it out. But the, the, these three things are essential. All right, so let's get into the fourth, the fourth thing. So, or I don't know, we could say three, two, one. Maybe this would be the number one thing. The number one thing you need to do and I would probably list this as number one, before you start doing anything else, is determine the area you want to live in. I see this all the time. People come to me, they call me in the telephone, and they give me their criteria. We're talking about everything, and they say, well, I don't know, I, I, you know, I want to check out Riverview, I want to check out New Tampa, I want to check out Lando Lakes, I want to check out South Tampa, whatever. Pick the area first. Now, if you're in the Tampa area, or whatever city you're in, just substitute my city from yours. If you're in the Tampa area, if you're looking in the Tampa Bay area, you're going to probably know the difference of a lot of these different areas out there. But if you're not in the Tampa Bay area, this could be rather confusing. So if you're not in the Tampa Bay area and you're looking in this area, I'm going to put a video up here and it's going to go through a breakdown of the different areas in Tampa. But this is where your real estate agent becomes so important, explaining different areas to you. So let's say, we'll break this up into two buyers. If you live here in the Tampa area, or if you're local to the area you're doing your search in, pick your number one area first. And the reason why I say that is because if you have three areas you really like, and your agent's sending you information from all three areas, and that's okay, they should, but try to pick your first area, your first area, then your second, then your third, because you don't want to be looking at your third favorite area, and then all of a sudden, 
your favorite home, the home you would have chose in your favorite area, just sold. So always do that. Now, if you're relocating, what you want to do, you want to come to, 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 to the area, in our case it's Tampa, and you want to visit. And you want to get your real estate agent, you're going to have so you're going to be using your real estate agent as, as a guide. Um, explaining, you should be able to tell your realtor what you're looking for, what kind of home you like, what kind of subdivision you like, what's important to you as far as amenities or schools or you know, some of the things they can't talk about. But you want to make sure you use your real estate agent as a resource. And then you want to get online and, and maybe Google and look into different areas. But let's say you have five areas. Here's what I suggest to everybody. And I have a buyer coming out this week and they're doing this. And so what you do is, let's say you're up to 350. You want to keep a very narrow search and you want to pick the five different areas that you want to look in. And then your narrow search would be from maybe um, 340 to 350. Because let's face it, the vast majority of the homes are going to probably be at 349.9 or 350. So you're going to want to pick five homes in each area and then you're going to want to have your, you don't want to go look inside. What you want to do is you want to take those five homes, put them in your GPS or your phone or whatever you're using, and drive around. And you're getting an idea of what you get for the money. Because it's going to help you narrow down. One, you don't just want a couple homes. And you don't just want ten homes. You want five as a good soft spot. And the reason you want five is because out of those five, Two of them are probably overpriced anyhow, but it's going to give you a good idea. So you'll go look at this, these five, you know, then you'll go look at these five, then you'll look at these five, and then you'll have a really good idea of what area or areas you want to live in. You could have a toss up between one area or two areas. So anyhow, you want to stay focused. You want to have a game plan. That's what you need. You want to be able to pick up the phone, call your real estate agent, bounce stuff off of them. Because when you're looking at homes, you need to rely on your real estate agent to give you solid advice, especially on the different builders. Is this a quality builder, a quantity builder, who's the builder, etc. So anyhow, I hope this helps. I tell you, if you do this, folks, you're going to save so much time, so much frustration. And I know I've just been doing this for 20 years and I have people all the time calling me saying, wow, it really works. So and when I used to do all these training classes to years ago to real estate agents, I would always teach them this because agents, I think, aren't asking buyers enough questions. They need to ask question after question after question, and then they need to guide the buyer. All right, I hope this helps. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. If you live in the Tampa Bay area, I'd love to help you. Have a wonderful day and best of luck to you.